Welcome back to another exciting chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to classify matter. But what is matter? Well, matter is everything that we see and we don't see as well. So the best definition of matter is anything that has mass and take up space, and therefore it has volumes, right? Now, how do we determine if a substance has mass? Of course, we can use a scales or a balance. Now, not all scales are the same. Some scale are used to measure something very small, and some can be used to measure very large objects like us, okay? So keep that in mind, not all scales are the same. And then for volumes, we can use a graduate cylinders or a beaker. That is something that we use in most of the science class. But again, we have more precise instrument to measure a very tiny volume of a substance or mixture. Now, let's go back. We use the term substance and mixture. Well, basically matter can be divided into substances or mixtures. Well, the word substance, the better term would be pure substance. Well, we use the word pure, that means it's one of a kind. So substance is a term that describes pure substance, which tell you the word pure means 100%, right? The better way to say pure is one type of substance. And we already learned how to use the periodic table. All those elements on the periodic table, they can exist as a pure element, therefore pure substance. Hence, we have the term element. Okay, so element is the purest form of substance that retain a unique properties. Okay, and we also learn along the line that atoms combine together or bond together to make compounds and molecules. So let's go over here and finish with element before we move on to molecules and compound. Well, again, element is one type of atoms and they all exist on the periodic table. So if they are on the periodic table, it is considered as an element. Well, we have elemental molecules. The word molecules mean two or more atoms of either the same or different types of elements. So molecule is very unique. The definition itself is two or more atoms, okay? So elemental molecules, that means that element exists as a molecule. Then we have compound. Now compound is very unique. It is Consider a molecule as well, but it is unique because it consists of two or more different, that's the key, different between molecules and compound. A compound will have two or more different types of atoms. So therefore, a compound is a molecule. So all compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compound because Remember molecules, you can have two or more atoms of the same element. So let's look at some example and before we move on. This is gold right there, pure gold, expensive, right? And here is the structure of gold when we look under a unique microscope that we can see different individual atoms of gold right there. Now, when we look at structure in terms of molecule, we don't really see like that. It's very difficult. So we have diagrams or we have models that demonstrate what the molecules look like, okay? This is an example of what it looked like. Uh, it is more of a hypothetical depiction of what a molecule looked like. We use this so that way we can organize information and we can predict properties of substances or molecules or compound. So right here, what do we have? Hydrogen, if you see hydrogen, it exists as H2. So this is an elemental molecule. It's the same thing for oxygen. This is the oxygen that we breathe in that we need to live, right? And then we have phosphorus, how we have four phosphorus atoms stick together. Then we have sulfur. There are eight sulfur atoms stick together as a unit. And here's the beautiful water. The water molecule that we enjoy drinking every day is the most important, one of the most important chemical that is for all living thing on this planet. And then we have carbon dioxide, similar to water. We breathe out carbon dioxide, plant taking carbon dioxide, okay? And then here's glucose. We all love glucose. This is a type of substance that give us the sweet taste, okay? Uh, so we addicted to sugar and glucose is a building block of sugar that we consume on a daily basis. Isn't that cool? So that is an example of element 
molecules and compounds, and how we use model to illustrate it in order to have a deeper understanding or better understanding about the properties. Now let's go back up here and look at the other group, which is mixture. Well, think of the word mixture. We mix them together. We physically mix them together, right? So basically, you have two or more different substances. The key aspects over here is different substances okay here you can have a bunch of gold together right mixed together in one place but it's only one type of substance for a mixture is two or more different substances there are two type of mixture one is homogeneous homos is a prefix for same and then we have then we have heterogeneous and here you have heteros that is different that's a prefix for different so what does that really mean if something looked the same okay or the better term is uniform throughout the whole entire mixture can we see the difference so in this case this is a homogeneous mixture and this one is a heterogeneous mixture i just want to show it to you right there and look at the different okay hetero you can see the difference right here. This is actually a mixture of oils and water. You can see the oils right there, okay? You can see it right here actually as well. And here, this is the drink that we consume all the time. And if we look very closely, the color is the same. It, you cannot even tell the difference, right? It's uniform, that's the word uniform. It's the same throughout. So that's the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous. And we have a term for this homogeneous that we also use as well, solution. When you see the word solution, it's also another term for homogeneous. And this term solution is commonly deal with aqueous solution. They, and let's look at an example of a solution. In this case, we have potassium dichromate, this right here. And then we have water, we mix them together, then we have a homogeneous mixture. And this is the solution right there is very uniform throughout, and we cannot identify the difference between chromate or potassium dichromate water, right? So that is how we classify matter into different groups in order to have a deeper understanding of how they behave in life and how we can use it in our daily life to make all this beautiful thing that you have. Now let's go do some practice problem. In this example, we look at diamond. Did you know that diamond is made of pure carbon? The same carbon that made up charcoal, graphite, the graphite that you write with every day, right? But it's super expensive. So in this case, what is carbon? Carbon is on the periodic table, so it is an element, okay? So in what group? It is a substance, there you go. And it cannot be separated by physical means, okay? So we cannot, and then what about chemical means? No, we cannot as well. And is this on the periodic table? Yes, but not in terms of diamond, but it is carbon. So let's finish. There you go. In this example, we are going to look at black ink. Now we already know how to make black ink already. We basically mix a bunch of color, all of the color together to form this black color. So in this case, what we have is gonna be a homogeneous mixture. Okay, and it's in a group of mixture. And then, can it be separated by physical mean? Yes, it can, okay? We can actually separate it. There's paper chromatography that we can use to separate the different color. And then, is this on a periodic table? No. And now let's check and finish. So that is how you classify matter into different group in order to understand their properties so that we can use the, them to make all the things that we see or we appreciate in our daily life. And we'll see you next time on another exciting chemistry lesson.